Hello and welcome to another episode of Unreleased or Unobtainable, a series where I either look at games that were never released or are extremely expensive because they're rare and were sold in limited quantities. This is achieved through the miracle that is emulation, since a lowly YouTuber like myself cannot afford the thousands of dollars that unobtainables go for, and because the unreleased are simply that. This series began with obscure, rare, and expensive Atari 2600 games. So, since there appears to be no shortage of those, let's delve back into that large pixeled, and usually drama-filled world. Air Raid has approximately a dozen known copies in existence, Extraterrestrials probably about six, but how about a game with just two copies? And to make things more interesting, let's double down with the fact that one of those copies might even be a prototype. Yep, we're likely looking at the world's rarest game. Kind of makes my Air Raid thumbnail look a bit clickbaity, doesn't it? Gamma Attack's premise has you defending a planet against tank driving vegans in a UFO. I kid you not. It was developed by Gammation in 1983, who were a small mail order business based in Ohio. But before we explore its rediscovery, a $500,000 eBay listing, Atari Age forum drama, and the original developer threatening copyright infringement to anyone who dares release the ROM before restarting Gammation as a home brewer, <sighs> let's take a second to just play the game. It is the star of the show after all. There are plenty of 2600 games of no storyline, but Gamma Attack begs to differ. You're in control of a flying contraption called a Gamma. Unfortunately for you though, you're the only Gamma in the local stellar field. The outpost planet you're defending on your lonesome is under attack by the vegan war fleet, which are using their vegan laser pulsar tanks. Since this is the only inhabitable planet in the system, you're apparently expected to fight them until the bitter end. Gee, sounds like this guy needs a union. I guess the developer must have been a keen carnivore too, to, you know, take such a dig at vegans. Too bad they didn't have Beyond Burgers in the 1980s. The game itself has a few noteworthy quirks, the first of which is the title screen. It doesn't seem like much in the modern day, but I was surprised a game of this vintage lets you navigate the gamma around the screen before you've even started a round. I think this may have just led to confusion since it's not what you'd expect, and you're left wondering why you can't shoot. It's noteworthy nonetheless. Controlling the saucer from right to left, the gamma only shoots at a 45 degree angle, which makes for slightly unexpected gameplay. The endless stream of tanks are moving towards you, also firing at that angle, so it does take a bit of getting used to, but in a good way. It's a slightly derivative challenge. Every time you receive a hit, the gamma will be forced to fly slightly lower to the ground, making the challenge greater. Get hit too many times, and the gamma will transform into Gammation's mascot, Gammy. This signifies a game over. As you can probably imagine for such a game, the end goal is to last as long as possible, earning the highest possible score. The graphics and sound are above average for the system too. It's not difficult to tell what you're looking at considering how few pixels there are, and I found the animations to also be quite serviceable. I wouldn't blast the sound too loudly, lest you piss off your neighbours, but it's far from the worst sounds to ever come out of a 2600. Another quirk that might confuse gamers is that the controller only works in port 2, but apart from a few speed settings, there's not much else to mention. Well, until you check the box art, that is. We're still not totally sure if the game was ever released with this box art, but if it was, then it was straight up lying. Apart from what I've already discussed, there's mention of heat-seeking missiles and aerial mines that I never saw, along with enemy fuel depots, whatever the purposes of those are. It also shows two other levels, titled Inside the Enemy Ship and Underground Enemy Fortress. I played the room for a while and only ever saw the same screen. Searching around and all of the screenshots and gameplay footage videos on the internet show the same thing too. Clearly, these features aren't in the game. That's enough about the game itself though. What's the story of the developer and how did Gamma Attack resurface? That tale begins in the January of 2008 with an Atari age forum user named Phantom starting a thread about the game. Directed to a seller through his brother-in-law, he had recently bought a lot of 80 games that were for the most part unremarkable. Discovered in the pile though, was Gamma Attack. He initially thought it might have just been homebrew, but it turns into the most significant find of his collecting career. It's not every day you stumble upon one of the rarest games in existence. I'm sure most collectors have sticky dreams about such a scenario. At the time, all that was known about Gammation was from a handful of adverts in 80s magazines. Focusing on hardware rather than games, one of two items they sold besides Gamma Attack was the Firepower 100. Basically a cheat device, it was plugged in line between a console and its controller and enabled rapid fire. 
A dial controlled how rapid said fire was, maxing out at 30 shots per second, and even included an LED indicator and a 90 day warranty. This was compatible with a range of computers and consoles of the time, of course including the 2600. There's not much information about Gammation otherwise, other than the fact that it was based in Fairborn, Ohio. Gammation's other product was the Firepower FP1, which was specific to the 2600's joystick. A rapid fire add-on as well, it would be interesting to see how this worked. It was installed directly into the joystick itself, although no soldering was required. Other selling points include improving your score through cheating, as well as even reducing fatigue. It could be yours for just the low price of $9.95 with $1.50 postage. Cods aren't an accepted payment method though. It was here however, that we have the one ever mention of Gamma Attack in contemporary print. A special offer relegated to small print at the bottom of the advert makes mention of this video's subject. It was offered at $24.95 by itself, or $14.95 if you ordered it with the FP1. This is all the information the world knew of the game until 2008. Before then, it was just a rumour that circulated around internet forums. As you can imagine, Phantom's thread went off. Plenty of speculation began, with many wanting as much information about Gamma Attack as Phantom could provide. It was even mentioned that the original programmer, Robert Eskin, sadly passed away in 1993. Armed with that information, Phantom set about his plan. He wanted to release the ROM freely, but in the meantime, he was paranoid about reproduction clones possibly diminishing its value, or something to that effect. He even went as far to post photos of the cartridge with inverted colours, so no one knew what the labels truly looked like. He planned to release the repo carts himself, make some moolah, and then release the ROM to Joes like me. We could discuss the ethics of this since it was indeed someone else's work, but I feel that was discussed enough in the original thread 14 years ago. It was at this point, he listed on eBay for the eye-watering price of $500,000. Unfortunately, eBay doesn't seem to keep listings that far back online, and the Wayback Machine didn't crawl it. But there's plenty of news coverage to be found, if you search. Of course, no one is going to pay that much for an Atari 2600 cartridge, at least not in 2008. Maybe these days it wouldn't be so far-fetched. Regardless, it was intended as a publicity stunt to drum up attention, and drum up attention it did, as evidenced by this MTV interview I found. Several threads later, and Phantom's repo venture was in full swing with the help of another Atari Age member named Sean. These were eventually released and can still be found online along with many other repo manufacturers. Then, as promised, the ROM was released for free. Thanks to that, I could make this video. It was around this time that Phantom sold the cartridge to another member named Wanda007, who was known as being quite the heavy hitter at the time when it came to rare 2600 collections. The sale price was never disclosed however, but then this story received a twist. A user named Gamecrawler popped into the conversation. Real name? Robert Eskin Jr., the developer and owner of Gammation. Turns out he wasn't so dead after all. You see, Robert Eskin did die in 1993, but that was actually Jr.'s dad. Eskin was alive and well, and was none too happy that internet enthusiasts were profiting from his work. Eskin immediately made it clear that they were in breach of his copyright and that no more repos were to be sold. He also wanted the ROM offline. His intentions went further than that too. In the same posts, he announced that Gammation was relaunching as a homebrew developer and that he would be working on sequels to Gamma Attack. A delightfully 90s styled website was launched too, which can still be viewed through the Wayback Machine. His next step was then to list his own repos on eBay. These were $150 each, and if that was too dear, you could also buy the ROMs for $20 each. As you can imagine, people found this a bit outlandish, but it was what it was. Whether anyone paid these amounts is unclear, but in the same thread, Eskin did respond to some Q&A. Among talking about how he developed Gamma Attack, he mentioned that it sold less than 20 copies. He also mentioned that the Firepower 100 sold approximately 250 units. By April, thankfully his tune on the ROM had changed, and he released what he called Gamma Attack 4 for free. Although I'm not sure why it's designated as number 4, since the gameplay is identical. It does, however, feature a new splash screen advertising his website. The copyright notice also changed from 1983 to 2008. Additionally, he released the original box art, which we examined earlier. So, as I said, it was April by this point. The saga had been ongoing for four months. However, all stayed quiet on the Gamma Attack front until November 2009. Eskin pops up again, this time seeking to sell another, original Gamma Attack cartridge. He claimed this was his last original, although this did receive some scepticism. I won't delve too deeply into the drama here, as it does seem petty in the present, but the short of it is that some accused it of being a prototype, or even newly built. Either way, if it was a prototype, it could be argued that it was worth even more than the existing retail release. 
Regardless, that's all for $793 shipped. Take that as you will. Around the same time, Eskin also listed the original printout of the code listing. His asking price? $6,000. Sadly, the listing can also no longer be viewed, and I do not know if anyone bought it. Presumably not though, I'd say. However, what we do know that sold was a limited run of 100 repos that he re-released that came with a signed letter of authenticity. These still pop up from time to time and garner a decent price. While on the subject of Eskin, I should mention that some websites also list him as the developer of the game ZTAC, also on the 2600. I was unable to verify this however, since his name is not listed in the box art, the manual, or in-game. This was quite common for the period though, so if anyone has any proof, please send it in my direction. Back to Gamma Attack, it should be noted that there is no known value. While other games in this video series at least have recorded sales to use as a basis, the only known handover was between Phantom and 1 to 007 over 10 years ago. We could go off the $793 of what might have been a prototype, but no one is going to argue that whoever bought that got an absolute steal. However, that cartridge may have had a sad end. Again, this is unverifiable, but in a Rocket Boy article about rare games, a commentator by the name of William Roach claims his copy was lost in a house fire in 2012. Whether this was the second copy sold, the original, or another altogether is unknown, but it is tragic if true. Unfortunately, the commentator doesn't have a profile for further potential research, so who knows? Hopefully it's bullshit. Ultimately, I'm glad this eventuated in us all being able to play Gamma Attack. Even if there are just one or two copies out there, everyone gets to experience what's not that bad of a game. I'm also glad that Robert Eskin was actively involved too. He may have seemed a bit standoffish, but I'm personally glad that he was able to make some money off Gamma Attack after all these years. I doubt he made much, if anything, in the 80s. He claimed that the magazine adverts were so expensive that he barely made even. For now, however, that's all there is to say about Gamma Attack. All sources for my research can be found in the description. A particular shout out goes to Racket Boy and their article. It's the best summation of the story online. Also, if you have any ideas for future videos, then by all means comment below. Otherwise, it's been a pleasure, and I'll catch you in the next video.